Okay, we're on Yivamo, Perek Tet, Mishnah Gimel, third Mishnah, ninth chapter of Yivamo. So we're in the middle of talking about that there are certain women that are also to the husband and mutter to the Yavam, etc., etc. So the Mishnah continues along the scene and says the following, Shniyot midivresof. Remember there's all these lists of different kinds of arayot, <coughs> excuse me, that are prohibited me to Rabbanan. They're, they are, they are arayot shniyot, secondary level. So your asur, a person is asur to sleep with his mother or marry his mother. That's first level, the araita. But shniyot or aim imo. So the Mishnah says, shniyot midivay sofrim. It's if you have this isur of shniyot, shniyot labav, although shniyot labav, yabam. Sometimes she could be a shiyah to the husband and not a shniyot to the yabam. Then asur alabav, umutera the yabam. Then she's prohibited, she's prohibited. Meaning the husband married her as an isur shniyot. He married his grandmother or whatever. Gross. Okay, but he's not a grammar to the Yabam. Then she's Asura Labal, Mutar the Yabam. The husband dies, Yibum is permitted. Shniyali Yabam, but look, remember, Kaz is Yibum di Oraita, because since it's Shniyot, if the husband married her, it's only Isur de Rabbanan. Shniyali Rabbam, we'll get to that, we'll get to the strictness of the Isur in a minute. Shniyali Yabam, Velo Shniyali Yabam, the Baal. Let's say she's a Shniyat to the Yabam and not to the Baal. Asura Li Yabam, Umutar the Baal. Then she's permitted to her husband, but she's Asura to her Baal. Let's give you an example. Just we've seen this before, the shniyot before. Um, make this a little. No, you can see it pretty well. There's a classic example of shniyot that Yaakov had two wives, Rachel and Leah. So God, <coughs> Binyamin are brothers, but they are brothers. God and Binyamin are brothers from the father's side, from their father, but they're not brothers from the mother's side. So Binyamin marries God's grandmother from his mother's side. He's not related to her at all. So that's permitted. I don't know how old she is, whatever. But he marries guy, his brother's grandmother from the mother's side. So therefore, he should, he, this Devorah here is muteret labaal, but asurali yabam. Because she, she is a shniya midivre sofrim. That's a halacha of shniya midivre sofrim. It could be the other way around. Let's say God married Devorah. He married his grandmother, but then he died. And then Binyamin would be the miyabe, and the yibum would be mutar. That's what the Mishnah is talking about. Shniya leze leze. Let's say she's the grandmother of both of them. That's just one example. Asura leze velaze. Then she's prohibited to each one. And therefore, in the case where they married a Shniya, a person married a Shniya, that's in a regular case, no Yibam whatsoever. Ela lo ktuba. She doesn't get the Kesef ktuba, the hundred or the or the matayim of the base ktuba. Ela lo ktuba. She doesn't get the money of the ktuba if they get divorced or he dies. Velo peirot. She doesn't get peirot, meaning. Normally, the Baal has the right to pay rot. Let's say she brings in what's called nichsei malug. We've learned this before, this idea of nichsei malug. Nichsei malug is a property that she brings into the wife, into the, into the, into the marriage as a dowry, and it's hers. Okay, that he doesn't have to pay, he doesn't have responsibility for it, but he gets pay rot. The reason he gets pay rot is because he has to, if she ever got, got captured, he would have to redeem her. But in this case, he wouldn't have to redeem her. Nonetheless, if he ate the pay rot, he wouldn't have to pay her back. Below mizonot, he doesn't have to. He doesn't have to pay for her sustenance. Why? <clears throat> whether she during whether in his lifetime or even afterwards. Normally, a husband, of course, has to pay for the sustenance of his wife. They shouldn't have been married. Why? Because he married a shniya. She's a sur to him. Velo bilaot. Bilaot means let's say she has peirot. She brings property into the marriage, and it becomes used up. It becomes it becomes worn out. That's called bilaot. So if the husband used. Remember, the nichsei malug, she gets, it's her nichsei malug. Im nishtamesh, let's see the Bible, im nishtamesh ba'am nichsei malug shela, ad shebalu, until they were worn out. Eino chayav l'shalem. He doesn't have to pay back. He doesn't have to repay her bala'o. Havlad kasher. But it's not a mamzer, meaning it's only asu to Rabbanan. And so therefore, the child of that marriage, of a shnia, is not a mamzer. The kofino toloti, but the Rabbanan coerce the husband to give the wife a divorce. On the other hand, I have an almana, the coin got all of a coin, got all of a marries an almana, a widow. Gusha, the chalut, the coin, hediot. Coin, hediot, marries a gusha. Mamzeret, unetina, lisa, la mamzeret, or a netina from the netinim. To Israel, or about Israel, netina, mamzer, yesh lehem ktuba. In all those cases, they do have the case of ktuba. So what emerges is, we're much more machmir on shniyot with these vey sofrim, on these, these vey sofrim, on these rabbanans, than we are on almana coin got all of a disorder or writer. How could we be more machmir on a derabanan than a deraita? The Bartanura explains, because the ones that are derabanan, they need strengthening, meaning people would say, ah, it's some kind of crazy relationship that the rabbis made up. 
Therefore, we were mechazek and made all these stringent rules. She doesn't get a ketubah. So no woman would want to marry her shnia because she knows she'd pay the price. But the ones that are divrei Torah don't require the additional strengthening of the rabbis and the rabbanan to make all these other rules to prevent them from having the marriages because they wouldn't do it anyway because they said he's too you're a writer. Stop here. As we dedicate our little memory of my father, Harav Simcha Be Kalman. Have a great day.